guys. Hi, my name is Jania. I am a YouTuber. I'm also a filmmaker, screenwriter, and most importantly, I'm a woman of God. A few people have wanted me to make this video, and I think this video is going to be really transparent, but it's not going to only help the people that reached out to me, but it's going to reach so many people and it's going to help a lot of people, hopefully, and I pray that my testimony moves you and touches you but i don't want y'all to just mainly focus on me i want y'all to be able to see god through me and hear him when i speak and feel him through me before i get started i definitely want to pray father god in the name of jesus i thank you and i praise you thank you god for being so good thank you for being so great thank you for being so merciful thank you for just dying on the cross jesus and you know just forgiving us from all of our sins and you conquered death. Death is defeated when it comes to you. And we don't serve a God who's dead, but we serve a God who is alive. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free and delivering me from all of these bad habits like porn watching pornography and self-pleasure stuff and masturbation and i pray that every single individual who is watching this who has probably dealt with this or is dealing with this now is able to get saved set free and delivered devil we bind you up and your network of demons and we cast you out you won't have your way and you won't interfere and let every single person who is watching this be able to hear you through me feel you through me and see you through me lord in jesus name i pray let your holy spirit flow in the atmosphere and have your way in jesus name i pray and it is so and so shall it be amen this video is probably part two of my testimony or an extension of it i dropped my testimony video in august of 2021 I've definitely seen how much I've grown just as a person and also in the spiritual. I'm a sinner who has been saved because of God's grace. God is so gracious. He's been gracious to me and he's going to be gracious to you. But something that we shouldn't do is we shouldn't abuse God's grace. Right now we're living in the grace period, but we shouldn't test God or mock him. And we shouldn't be thinking that we're in the position to say, you know, I can sin and do whatever I want. And I know that later on you're gonna forgive me because the Bible talks about how God chooses to forgive us and cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't call us by our sin, but he calls us by our name. Somebody so loving and so perfect calls us by our name. I did a lot of research and I've written down a lot of notes. So God, please let me go about this video in decency and order and <laughs> let me be able to help the people watching this in Jesus name. Amen. If you've seen my testimony video in a little part of it, I did talk about how I pretty much watched porn a lot growing up. It was something that I was introduced to when I was really, really young. Um, and it didn't start becoming like an addiction or something that I would end up watching every day until I got older. When you're a child, of course there are moments of discovery or moments of curiosity, right? That's natural, like to be curious about. When it becomes something where you feel like you can't live without it, it becomes a false god and an idol. And it also becomes like an addiction in a way. Anything could be an idol and there could be so many different types of addictions. But I believe that there's a lot of people who are watching this who have probably realized that they're addicted to porn and self-pleasure and masturbation and everything like that and are actually saying, you know what, I need to stop, but I don't know how. As I got older, started approaching my late teen years, that's when I started to watch it more and more. The crazy and unfortunate thing is that this stuff, like porn or corn, whatever people call it, it's not just on certain websites if you know what websites i'm talking about it's on social media as well like you could see it on probably pinterest you could see it on instagram i don't have facebook it might be on facebook there's also probably like video games like it's in movies it's almost pretty much everywhere unfortunately and it's part of whose agenda satan's agenda i think i first saw it on social media like when i was really younger like on youtube or whatever as i got older middle to late teen years i started you know seeing it on certain accounts and pages online i saw it a lot on social media that was the way of how i was able to see it i definitely it was so long ago it was definitely something that i started to do more and more and it became such a crazy addiction and i believe the addiction started around the time where 
I'm from America, so the country was shut down in like 2020. I was a senior in high school. There were times where I was just like, literally like not even interacting. I was just in my house, just in my room and stuff. And I didn't know what else to do. And there were times where I was feeling lonely and there were times where I was feeling bored. I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm bored. So I don't know what else to do. Let me isolate myself. And I was satisfying my flesh. And mind you, this is in a span of like months. But there were times here and there where after I did what I was doing, I felt guilty and I felt a feeling of like conviction a little bit. And this was around the time where I wasn't taking my walk with the Lord seriously. You know, I believed in God and Jesus and wanted to do what's right, but then also, okay, I go to church on Sunday, but then all the other days, I don't even want to read my Bible. I don't even like know so much about having a relationship. It was a lot about religion in a way. I definitely was like living for the world, but then also thinking I was living for Christ. So, you know, you have that double-mindedness and you also have that lukewarm sense in a way. And the thing about that is when you don't really spend time with God and don't really know God or get to know him, your version of love is tainted or distorted. The way you see yourself is going to be different than how you see yourself when you know God's love and when you get to know more about God and have a relationship with him. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, this is pleasing me. Life is great or whatever. In reality, I'm actually having a carnal mindset and I'm not achieving that spiritual mindset and trying to have life in peace. I'm trying to fill the void in, right? By watching these things because it's satisfying or pleasuring myself because it's satisfying and feels good in the moment. But in reality, I'm separating myself from God even more because that's what sin is. Sin is basically you being separated from God. And what is sin? Sin is evil, right? When you watch pornography, when you're engaged in self-pleasure and masturbation, you're doing self-gratification and that involves a lot of selfishness. But in your walk with Christ, you're supposed to be selfless. So if you're so selfish and you're gratifying yourself, you're saying, I don't really need God. I need me. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So there's this constant battle of the flesh and the spirit. And at the time, you know, I'm thinking, oh, this is all good or whatever. But then there would be that thought in the back of my mind where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I need to stop. And then, you know, the next day would come, I fail. And I say, oh my gosh, I need to stop. I repent or I ask God for forgiveness. Do this stuff again. And then I fail. And then I ask God for forgiveness. And then I do it all over again. And it's like a cycle and it's like a cycle and a cycle over and over and over again. And what does the devil do? He likes to put you in cycles. This is a pattern that needs to stop. But in order for you to access the potential and to access the promises of God, you have to override the pattern. Override the pattern to access the potential and then you'll understand God's promise. Override the pattern to access the potential and then you'll understand and learn more about God's promise. And I was doing it for months and months and months. And then it got a time where the conviction just fell even deeper. I started to feel even more conviction. The more I would do it, then sometimes I would feel even more worse and sorry. There were a few times where there would be these thoughts in my mind where I'm thinking, since God watches all that we do while I'm doing this stuff, how is God feeling? A lot of us ask this question, what would Jesus do? But we need to ask the question, how would Jesus react? Or what would Jesus say? Or how would Jesus look if we did this? What would be his facial expressions? How would Jesus feel? Because God is a God who has feelings as well. It became a time where I knew it was bad, but didn't completely know why it was bad because I didn't really have that relationship with Christ and didn't really realize I was quenching and grieving his spirit after time. It would be like, imagine if I physically see God and while I'm doing these things, while I'm watching these things, he is right there. I feel like when I started thinking about that, I was like, wow, this is starting to get a bit bad. But because it's an addiction and a pattern, you do it over and over and over again. There was this one time where I wanted to um, apply for a job in college, actually. And it was in October and like I got into college and um, I started to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord a little bit more and my relationship started to you know become 
existing with the Lord. But there was a time where I was able to hear his voice. And it was interesting because I wouldn't really just normally hear his voice all the time. I really wanted this job. And the Lord was saying, if you want this job, you're going to have to pray. And you're going to have to fast. And you're going to have to stop watching these things and not masturbate and not do self-pleasure. And he told me the specifics when it came to like the fasting and what he wanted me to do and everything. The sacrifice, it was, it was hard. So I'm gonna have to really kill and deny my flesh. And I'm gonna have to actually try to have a spiritual mindset and take up my cross and carry it or die daily. That's what I'm gonna have to do. And that's what's like on the Christian walk. You're gonna have to sacrifice things. You're gonna have to recognize that God's not gonna give you what you want but he's going to give you what you need and what you need is to not watch porn to not have self-pleasure and i ended up successfully doing that fast it was hard but i did it but did that make things easier not really because the devil loves to attack you right after a, a fast after a while i did that less and less it took me a while to realize that this is a problem this is an issue and this is an addiction so i'm going to tell you some of the things that i experienced i definitely believe that i had triggers it involved certain emotions or feelings I was feeling. Some of it was curiosity, some of it was also I need to fill a void. All this stuff has to do with lust, but a lot of people think that lust is love, but in reality it's not. I think a lot, sometimes the reasons why people watch porn and do self-pleasure is because they're not getting that stuff, or also there's a lack of self-esteem, so there's low self-esteem, the feelings of loneliness. And I didn't really love myself back then, like I didn't really have self-love and I'm not going to sit here and say self-love is the best love because God's love is, but back then I had a lot of feelings of loneliness. I experienced a lot of boredom and my way of coping with reality and being in isolation was to watch these things because it was entertaining, to watch these things because it would fill the void, to watch these things because it was fulfilling to me. It felt self-gratifying, but then you get terrible headaches and what else comes with that? demonic attacks the demons are involved when you watch these things the demons are involved when you do self-pleasure and masturbate demons are definitely involved and these things should not be normal these things should not be normalized these things are not things that i would encourage anybody to do i was definitely getting attacked and i feel like when you are watching these things and doing these things to your body the devil and his demons are definitely involved that might mean you being possessed by them or you being oppressed by them as well if they can't possess you they'll try to oppress you i also got attacked by having these lustful thoughts getting attacked in my sleep through sleep paralysis through fear through low self-esteem an increase in loneliness and all these other things as well but it took me a while to realize that a lot of this started to happen when i felt bored when i felt sad when i didn't feel loved when i felt lonely um, other triggers could include, you know, places for people or other people, images, feelings. It varies with different people. Not everybody has the same exact experience. That's a lot about my experience. I can't remember every single thing because I've been delivered from it. Like, I don't watch those things anymore. I don't have a desire to. I don't do self-pleasure anymore. I don't have a desire to. If anything, I'm trying to be pure. I'm trying to live a life of purity and integrity. But the devil will try to find other ways to attack you. And there's a lot of people who still battle with having lustful thoughts or the devil trying to attack them with the idea of lust. They don't watch pornography or they don't do masturbation. Like, the devil is very smart, but God is smarter. Masturbation and porn, those are against our beliefs and God's teachings and it brings darkness into our lives. So when it comes to triggers, just ask yourself, what caused me to do this? Why was I watching this? When would be the times that would cause me to do this? What exactly are the side effects? So I'm going to go into depth not only about the spiritual side effects and the physical or natural side effects, but also social and psychological or mental side effects. So a social Porn portrays sex without emotional intimacy and it isolates us from others and you're becoming less committed in your relationships and you're becoming physically abusive towards others. You can also be objectifying others or viewing them as inferior and there's an incre increased risk of future marital problems and possible divorce. When it comes to the psychological, you are developing a carnal mindset. 
The book of Romans talks about how a carnal mindset leads to death, but a spiritual mindset is what? Life and peace. You're having that lack of a spiritual mindset. You're skewing thoughts and emotions that are related to what's normal, appropriate, and healthy sexual expression. So porn shows violence. It also shows domination and aggression towards others. There's a lack of empathy and love towards ourselves and others. And you're feeling that you're unacceptable or unlovable. Then it gets into you feeling lonely, despair, and depression, and low self-esteem. Those are the attacks from the enemy. Those are demonic attacks. You shouldn't have low self-esteem because God loves you. You shouldn't feel depressed because God said when pain comes in the night, joy comes in the morning. You shouldn't have feelings of despair and you shouldn't feel lonely because why? God and his angels are with you, with you everywhere. I'm in my room by myself, but the angels are all around me and God is right here watching this. And God is right next to you watching this too. There's also difficulty connecting with others and there's a denial of how porn is changing you. With the physical or the natural, um, I would say I experience like headaches. There's like pain like up here and stuff, but also your sleeping schedule is changing. That's what I experienced too, because I would stay up all night, insomnia. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm staying up late to do homework. I wasn't staying up late to work on a project for the Lord. I wasn't staying up late to intercede for others. I wasn't staying up late to, you know, clean my room. I was staying up late to watch these things. And insomnia is not good as well. It's like, okay, I stay up late all night and then I wake up by the time I should be eating dinner or by the time I should be getting out of school by the time I should be doing homework. Your sleeping schedule is reversed and it shouldn't be like that because the Bible talks about how we should be productive and if we're living for ourselves, then we might be just doing things that we shouldn't be doing. But when we're living for him, we're being productive. We're not engaging in slothfulness and procrastination and laziness and the disobedience can also lead to your delay. But when you give God your yes, that is the quickest way to freedom, obedience. And what is obedience? It's also worship. And then also, you know, objectifying the way people look. There's an increased sexual drive, increase in lust. But I think if you could beat lust, you could beat anything. You're more than a conqueror. If you could beat lust, if you could beat pornography, if you can beat sexual self-gratification, if you could beat self-pleasure, if you could beat masturbation, you could beat anything. I know you can. I know you can break generational curses because this is something that can be a generational curse that can pass on from family to family member to family member to family member, but you can break the curse. Don't let it get in your bloodline. And when it comes to the spiritual, like I said, there's a lack of a spiritual mindset. You're not having life and peace. You're trying to fill the void with everything that's not Jesus. And you're just existing. You're not even living. You're just walking around thinking that you're living because you're alive, but you're not even living. Spiritual, you're not having a spiritual mindset, but you're also having a carnal mindset. And you're giving the enemy access to your life. You're allowing these demons to basically torment you and when you give the enemy access to your life you're giving him the legal right and legal access but in reality the holy spirit should just be filling up the atmosphere and he should be living in you watching porn can distort your natural sexual feelings and it can cause people to just become dependent on it and dependency on pornography can alter brain chemistry so it leads people to just seek more intense and graphic pornographic images so it can alter your thinking and the brain can heal itself through neuroplasticity Neuro neuroplasticity but pornographic images and stimulation lodged in our memory can remain troublesome for long periods of time not everybody has a photographic memory there are a lot of people who have short-term memories but the fact that you can watch something for so long and it could stay on your mind for a long time is just crazy and when it comes to struggles people struggle with emotional stress sexual dysfunction day-to-day -day tasks including school work family and life i know when i was watching that stuff and doing like self-pleasure stuff um i wasn't as focused on school i wasn't really reaching out to a lot of people i was in isolation because i wanted to be god wants you to not be in isolation Sometimes he'll call you into a season of separation, but I think with God, he wants you to fellowship with other people and there's community. 
God can call you into a season of separation or isolation um, for his good and to give him glory. But this is not giving him glory at all. So it's from the enemy. And these are basically ways it can affect you. When it comes to daily masturbation, it leads to weakness, fatigue, early ejaculation, and it can cause nutrition deficiencies. When it comes to the mental or the psychological, it causes people to have reduced self-esteem, lower sexual satisfaction, and frustration as well. Um, masturbation can make people self-absorb. So it goes against the Bible's idea of sex as a shared experience between a man and a woman. And then that causes self that causes sexual independence that can make married people less likely to look to their spouse for sexual pleasure pleasure and single people less likely to commit to a godly marriage it promotes lustful thinking and dwelling on sexual things which is not at all in god's will i'm not gonna sit here and say that sex is a bad thing you know like married couples are supposed to have sex um it's not bad to talk about that stuff but what but when it's on your mind all the time when you're watching that stuff all the time that's when demons are involved um the sexual fantasies that come with masturbation and the act of self-pleasure aren't part of the will of god but also a practice of masturbation flies in the face of the virtue of self-control. Self-control is an example of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit are the characteristics of Christ, right? And it talks about that in Galatians 5 verses 22 through 23. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Sex is not a need, it is a desire. We don't need it to live, we need our God to live. And we need to remember Mark 8 verses 34 through 35, and we should deny ourselves and deny self. That means resisting the temptation to gratify ourselves with the pleasure of masturbation and wanting to watch pornography. Matthew 5 verse 28 talks about or shows that Jesus' words leave no room for the fantasies that feed lust and masturbation, and these cause one to be very, very, very selfish and not selfless. I was thinking a lot about scriptures, so I'm gonna get my Bible. I'm gonna read a good amount of them. Let's turn to 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. The verse says, And they that may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive, taken captive by him, at his will so when you are watching these things and doing these things you are in the snare of the enemy you're a slave to fear now let's turn to romans 1 verses 28 through 32 that says and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness for fornication, wickedness, covet covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mal malignity, or mal malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them these verses talk about the list of vile affections and this is very quite detailed but such actions are not committed in ignorance but in willful defiance if you really want to give God the glory, the honor, and praise. And if you really love him, you will obey his commandments. But you will also not think, what would Jesus do? But you would think, how would Jesus feel? And what does Jesus say in his word? His word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he Romans 8 verse 13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. If you're living for the flesh, if you have that carnal mindset, it leads to death. If you're pleasing the flesh, you're never going to be satisfied because everything's always going to be like, what's next? What now? What's next? I'm not satisfied because you're filling the void with temporary things or things that are not God or not of God. And therefore, you're unsatisfied and you're unhappy as well. Now, I'm going to go to Colossians 3 verse 5. 
talks about the Christian living and the fruit of union with Christ. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetous and covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of god cometh on the children of disobedience and the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them but now ye also put off all the all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth and the list goes on and on but the colossians must as a result of being alive in christ be in the daily process of putting sin to death in their own lives while through the work of Jesus, believers stand righteous before God, and they are still responsible to grow into that position of righteousness. They must put aside personal and public sins. So this applies to the Colossians, but it also applies not only to the body of Christ, but to all people. We cannot say we love God and do the things that God hates because we are being hypocrites. The Bible talks about where much is known, much is required. So if you're in a state where you know it's wrong and you keep doing these things that are wrong, you're not falling into sin. You are living in sin. And God doesn't want you to live in sin. God doesn't want you to quench and grieve his spirit. I'm going to go to Ephesians 4 verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So Paul is explaining that even after placing one's faith in Jesus, a struggle continues between the old self and the new. Although believers die to sin, change their priorities, and begin to live for Jesus, the complete transformation doesn't take place at once. When it comes to having like a pornography addiction or you're still masturbating and doing self-pleasuring acts it's not going to just stop all at once god's going to work through you and it takes a process it takes discipline as well there are many of you who are probably saying i tried fasting i tried praying and it didn't work but that also takes discipline that also takes crazy faith and i'm going to go into depth or into detail about the other ways that can possibly help you as well but going back to this paul refers to the old self as dead and destroyed in romans 6 verse 2 because christ effectively removed people from the sentence of sin and death yet the influence of sin continues and believers must choose to ignore the evil desires that remain within them romans 6 verses 11 through 14 talk about that those choices must be made every single day no matter how long a person lives as a christian before I get into the section of ideas of taking action, for me, I would say there were several things that I did. I definitely prayed a lot. I definitely fasted. Um, and during my time of fasting, I had to recognize that I'm not fasting just because it's right. I'm not fasting just because I only want, the, want this to go away, but I want to please him. And when you're fasting, it's not just really for personal gain, but it's for you to sacrifice and kill your flesh you know carry that cross but then also to just keep god in mind so while i'm fasting i'm reading my word i'm praying watching sermons spending time with him talking to him talking to him hearing his voice i also was trying to be very disciplined discipline doesn't come very easy so it took me a while to realize that um a lot of the times i would be easily bored and unoccupied or feeling lonely um or i noticed i was doing those things when i was alone so what I tried to do was whenever I felt like I wanted to please my flesh, I had to take a step back from certain social media apps or I had to take a step back from watching certain Instagram posts. I would block as many accounts and just try to take things one day at a time. Of course, also trying to, to you know, ask God for forgiveness, but you're truly repenting when you don't do these things again, meaning that you're actually also really sorry. I also remember, um, spending time with the lord and as many times as i thought about these things i would instantly rebuke these thoughts i would try to learn or watch some other people's testimonies about how they got saved and set free from porn and masturbation and all these things um learning a little bit more about these things and of course praying and then also trying to keep myself busy if i'm focused so much on a task i'm going to be locked in and i'm not going to think about these things so i noticed that i was very when i would be bored i would watch and do these things so instead while i feel bored let me keeping my hands busy until the point where i would take this and do this little by little 
but um also just keeping myself busy to the point where I don't like this stuff and also just spending time and reading God's word and just seeing what's in his will and what's not in his will as well. Little by little, I started to develop a disgust and a dislike for the things God disliked and I just didn't like watching these things and doing these things and I started to notice like the attacks that I would have and so um, I didn't want to keep on having these attacks. I didn't want to keep on having these dreams. So I kept praying and I kept fasting and I kept being disciplined and I kept trying to like be busy and spend as much time in my word and just also fill myself up with the word. And I noticed that a lot of the time when I would be alone when I was younger, I would feel very lonely, but now I can be alone and not really feel lonely. And of course, you know, there are times here and there where I may feel like lonely, but I know God's love. And I think learning more about God's love and learning more about yourself can help you deal with these things as well. Those are just some of the ways I was able to stop this. And of course, with me, um, the Lord worked a lot on me and know that you don't always have to go to another person to deliver you. God can deliver you as well. But sometimes it might take a process. Sometimes the demons or whatever spirits are oppressing or possessing you instantly come out like this. And other times it takes a while. But when it comes to ideas for taking action, learn more about the physical, psychological, social, and spiritual effects of porn and masturbation by reading a bunch of articles. Confront denial. Commit to honesty at all costs. Don't be in denial that you are addicted to these things. I think one of the first steps is to actually admit that you're addicted to these things and that it's a struggle and it's an issue and it's not normal and you need to do something about it. Sexual addiction is not just a moral problem, but it's a brain problem as well. And dopamine is released in our brains when we view porn or act out sexually. It must be transformed by the we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds and we must find healing for our wounds access the wound that makes you return to unhealthy addictions ask where have i been wounded and how do these wounds affect me today identify your wounds identify your hurt get to the root allow yourself to process the pain and then you can find healing there's nothing wrong with processing pain there's nothing wrong with because we have emotions but at some point you're gonna have to heal and just find the root find the root cause it takes time to find out what the root cause is because a lot of people get exposed to this when they're so young know your triggers know your feelings get to the root and try to fix these things you can't just say oh i'm just gonna stop sinning and you don't know what the root is because a lot of sin has to do with these wounds and these roots so get to the root identify your wounds and then you can practice preventative accountability so just look at the circumstances around you and identify stressors which include marriage work and finances look for the triggers and then choose to stay in the and then choose to stay in the pain and process it without others rather than trying to numb it with porn or other addictions. Just be watchful when you are lonely, angry, and tired because those could be triggers as well. You can have an accountability group, have an accountability partner, um, and be relational with your pain. Process ways you can respond better together. The first step in the journey of walking in integrity and purity is to trust the only one who can conquer sin. Get away from your phone or other devices where you have access to this. Block certain accounts, do things that keep you busy, don't sleep with your phone, do something with your hands, try to retrain your brain to enjoy life and being without technology. Start reading God's word, pray rebuke negative thoughts, educate yourself about the exploitative nature of porn industry. Don't feel like you want to stop it. Feel as though there is a need to stop it. Become more social and less bored. Spend time figuring out what your purpose is. Be mindful of also what's going into your ear gates and eye gates as well. And like I said before, praying and fasting, but there's more depth to this because praying and fasting is only like, God, please stop this problem or God, I'm asking you for this and then I'm fasting for this for a certain amount of days and I'm not going to eat food or do this and that and that's it. Like it's not just, a, it's not really about personal gain. Um, it's about the Lord and your sacrificing um and the book of the other day i was actually reading this 
I'm gonna go to the book of Isaiah 58 verses 3 through 5. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have ye fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and, ex and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and accept and, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? So, verses 3-5. through five, I want to highlight those because the purpose, because my Bible talks about in the notes, the people want to claim some religious credit for their fast. Yet the purpose of fasting is to focus on the things of God rather than the usual comforts of life. The Israelites ended up quarreling, quarreling with one another and fighting on their on their fast days, revealing themselves to be self-centered and violent. Yet here they still expect God to respond to their requests. And then verses 6 through 10 say, Had the people truly been listening to God's voice, they would have known what they should be doing, fighting injustice rather than each other, freeing the oppressed, feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, clothing those in need, and taking care of their own family members. If they had done these things, they would have noticed an immediate difference, light in their darkness, healing, righteousness, and clear responses from God to their cries for help. I also want to make a point that, you know, a lot of people know how to worship god but don't know how to be holy they don't know what pleases god and displeases him we should strive to you know be holy and be righteous and know what pleases god and displeases him and watching porn and doing masturbation does not please him at all the holy spirit should be living within us people should see god in us and hear him when we speak and feel him through us he should be getting the glory. I want to go back to my notes and say, acknowledge the struggle. Don't live in denial. The hold pornography and masturbation has on somebody and has on you is very painful. Recognize the stronghold. I don't want anybody to deny the fact that this is a terrible struggle. It's really bad. It's very painful as well. We have to know that we have to override the pattern to access the potential we should override the pattern to access the potential we have the potential to reach globally we have to prepare the cargo in order to get in the ship we have to get into a container we don't understand what's been done to us until god shines a light on it he is trying to highlight that there has been a pattern genesis 4 verses 1 through 26 verse 7 i'm gonna highlight that too many of us are walking backward but we have the potential to be great Sometimes your pattern is overriding your purpose. Sometimes your pattern is overriding your promise. And then God makes you a promise after you recognize the potential. God can't lie. And there needs to be an agreement, right? We need to do our part and he will do his part too. I want to talk about Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3, which talks about how Abraham had to leave his country and go to a land God must have shown him. And sometimes God won't tell us first he wants us to go to the place so he can show us. We need to follow him. We want God to take us higher, but sometimes we think too low. But what a man thinks, so is he. So what's on your brain, what's on your mind, that matters. And sometimes we have a mindset where we are waiting to inherit something that never belongs to us. A legal possession. Sometimes we have a mindset where we are waiting to inherit something that never belongs to us. That's a legal possession. Never let the devil have the legal right or legal access over to your life. If you don't do what is right, sin is crouching at your door and you have dominion and you must be a master over it. Be the master over porn. Be the master over self-pleasure. Be the master over masturbation. Override the pattern. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, To gain understanding is to gain insight. And if you are understanding what you are doing, 
then you can stop it. You got to do a thing to get rid of a thing. You must subdue it and master it. Get rid of your pattern by force. Reinforce it so you can master it. Subdue the pattern. And then there's other scriptures like John 4 verse 7 through 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 20 to 21, Genesis 11, 5 through 6, John 4, 10 through 13. And we look at natural things and God is trying to show us supernatural things. Flesh and blood can't give us everything. We need to listen to what he says. Porn's not going to give you everything. Self-pleasure and masturbation aren't going to give you everything. And some of us are too focused on the buckets rather than the living water. Look to God. Don't look to man. Operate in excellence. Come in the house and enter into it with thanksgiving and praise and pray. Revelation 12 verse 11. I'm going to read from the King James Version. I'm going to read verse um, 7 through 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is, some, now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that but he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You can overcome your issues, you can override the patterns. It may be hard and it took me a long time, but I was able to do it. I think about it like this. Override the pattern to access the potential and you'll get closer to your promise, right? God's promise. You'll get closer to God's promise. If I kept on watching those things and if I kept on doing self-pleasure, I would not be here making this video. I probably wouldn't be the person that I am today and I wouldn't know God the way that I know him right now and I'm getting to know him even more and more. I wouldn't even know how bad lust is is and lust is still it's still really bad and i wouldn't even know how god loves me you know i will never fully understand how he loves me but and how much he loves me but i know more about god's love now than i did before and i'm so grateful the devil will try to get you to give into lust and stuff but you have to flee from it i pray that this video has helped y'all so much and that you do your research on the porn industry you do your research about masturbation you watch other testimony videos about these topics and there's also so many youtubers who talk about these things as well there are videos from alex wilson nick jones alexander pagani vlad sobchuk Isaiah Saldivar, Mike Signorelli, Ruslan KD, and so many more people. Lastly, I have a few questions. And here are questions you need to ask yourself. Why do I watch porn? Why do I masturbate? What or who is causing me to do these things? How do I feel about after watch? How do I feel after watching porn and masturbation? Is this from God? Does this align with his will? How does he feel? How would I respond knowing that God is watching me do these things? What would I do if I was able to physically see God watch me do these things in front of him? Am I producing and bearing fruit? Is it good fruit or bad fruit? Am I obeying God? Am I taking care of my temple, my body? Am I honoring God with this? Do I have an addiction? What can I do to get rid of these habits? What are my triggers? What is the root of this problem? How can I worship God in spirit and in truth? How can I get to the bottom of this? How can I reverence, honor, glorify, and praise his name? How can I please God? Please share this with other people that you think are going through these struggles silently or are vocal about it and just share it with other people as well because the goodness of God has been shown in this video and I can tell y'all that I will forever sing about the goodness of God and God's been so great. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you and I thank you for allowing me to get this opportunity to, to share your word and just 
decrease so you can increase. I pray that every single person watching this is able to know that they are more than conquerors and that they will not allow the devil to have the legal right and legal access over their life. And devil, we bind you up and your network of demons. We bind lust and incubus demons, succubus demons, pornography, masturbation, self-pleasure, anything that's not like you, Lord. And Lord, we remove it immediately. Please save, set free, and deliver these people and let them know that they can overcome this by the blood of the lamb, Lord. They are victorious and you're on their side and let them know about your love in jesus name i pray and it is so and so shall it be amen i will make sure to probably link the articles and the websites i use that will help me that helped me with this research into the description box down below and also more information probably more of these questions or if you haven't um, accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior is down in the description box below and i always put that in all of my videos i love you all and god loves y'all too you could watch my testimony and see what i've been through but i am not the same but i'm glad God delivered me from those things and he can deliver you as well.